dropping some knowledge and a little love and a little love this this is the fire on your head podcast with your host steve bremner steve bremner, steve bremner missionary to peru and blogger at stevebremner.com the podcast where we tackle gray areas your pastor doesn't talk about ladies and gentlemen steve bremner Greetings, this is Steve Bremner. You're listening to Fire on Your Head, and I heard somebody say, burn, baby, burn. This week's episode is brought to you by a fellow blogger and author by the name of Benjamin Nelson, who recently released a book called Encounters with Jesus, 40 Days in the Life of Jesus Through the Eyes of Those He Touched. I've been acquainted with Ben for quite a while online now, He's always been an encourager to me and uh, from time to time writes me notes uh, after listening to podcasts telling me, uh, you know, he enjoyed it and whatnot. Uh, And he retweets an awful lot of stuff I post. And so uh, when he contacted me and asked if I would be willing to uh, allow him to sponsor an episode and let you know about his book, it was, you know, it was an easy decision. I'm not selling out in order to let you know about it because I was genuinely interested in reading his book. Uh, I asked him for a copy uh, and uh, and he graciously gave it to me. And, uh, you know, I've not read every single post he's written on his blog site, Another Red Letter Day, um, that I didn't find. I I mean, I've I've not read every post, but every time I stop by, particularly for his Song of Solomon Saturday posts, um, I always find them enjoyable. Um, and any follow, you know, what's funny is, uh, as you're going to hear in today's episode, when I talk with Chris Wilson, um, Ben's doing it right. Ben's got, um, a pretty decent blog and he does a lot, a lot of the things Chris and I are going to talk about in today's discussion, uh, regarding what you should and shouldn't do with your blog and promote in, uh, uh, promoting to social media. Uh, Ben's doing these things right. And so, Uh, You will enjoy his blog if you check it out. You will enjoy his book if you give it a read. Uh, I thought it was worth it. It's different. Uh, There's 40 different accounts, 40 different days, uh, looking at at how Jesus' life impacted and touched other people. Uh, So, for example, um, people that that were healed specifically by him on something, you know, there's some um, room for fiction. There's some room for guesswork. But it's enjoyable. It doesn't really contradict any any doctrine. It's it's an inspirational, encouraging read. So head over to Amazon, uh, where you can pick up the Kindle version for only four ninety nine, or the paperback is nine ninety nine. And uh, in the show notes, I I have a link for you to the review I wrote of this book. And so to change gears a little bit, um, today's episode is specifically about writing. I've never done an episode in nearly eight years of Fire on Your Head where we talk about writing. I mean, I try to be practical. You know, my writings, my books are, um, you know, I saw I saw Northwest Prophetic post something uh, for my, my tongues book. And he said, you know, Steve's books are surprisingly practical. And, and that you know, feels like a pat on the back. It encourages me because I don't want to just give you fluff. I don't want to just say, hey, I think this. So read my book. Uh, I, I, you know, as I discuss with Chris today, um, a good writer, whether you're a blogger, you write books, or you, you write some other type of thing, uh, you you have, to, if, if you're good at it and you're worth your salt, you answer the question, What's in it for me if I read this? And so today's podcast, we follow that line of thinking. What's in it for me if I'm going to listen to a two-hour conversation between you and someone, Steve? Well, if you're a writer, you're a blogger, you're, you're, you're interested in honing in on your writing gift, then this episode will be something that not only do I encourage you to go to the show notes, go to stevebremner.com and, and follow the different points of reference that I've put there, I don't normally go into as much detail, as much work, as much, um, you know, this post, if you go to it on, on stevebremner.com, it's got more links than a uh, Polish sausage factory. I realize that. But it's just so that you can have a frame of, of reference to, to go look into the different things we talk about and recommend. Sometimes I link to where I got certain information from. 
So on the one hand, I feel like it's a bit of a departure from our normal form, but because so many people contact me about these issues, this particular topic, uh, I, I realize today's discussion might be boring to you or might be irrelevant, and, and that's fine. Uh, or, you know, again, considering the majority of the guests I have on the podcast are authors, uh, you know, we're also going to do a yet um, unconfirmed episode of the show about self-publishing. But all of it is geared towards the same goal as always, spreading the fire. You know, if that's encouraging you to write your books, write your blog, spread your message, then I'm happy to do that. And I want to give you some tools and, and make an episode that's incredibly practical, as practical as possible. And uh, another thing we discussed in the, the show today, you'll, you'll hear as you get to it, uh, where we were uh, discussing back and forth how short or how long a post or a, you know, a blog article should be. And I'm, I'm, you know, fluctuating with the format of, or at least the length of fire in your head, uh, sometimes doing short, sometimes doing long, and nobody seems to be complaining. Uh, you know, whenever I've done long discussions and split them in two, usually the second part has um, uh, a lot fewer listeners or people, uh, you know, there's a large percentage of people who check out the show because the guest shares that episode on social media and fewer people hear the second part. So um, I'm really hesitant to divide the long conversations into two anymore. And when I put long conversations on the, the show, like with uh, the last time I had Dave Edwards on, the last time I, or the, the, the time I got to talk to uh, Northwest Prophetic, nobody seemed to complain. Nobody seemed to mind. I didn't hear any feedback that people don't like it. But I do know um, a good number of you like to listen to this on your commute. And uh, and so some of you prefer the the half hour, you know, because you can start and finish uh, on one trip or, or when it's an hour, you, you know, so you split it in half and you, you begin it uh, on the way to work and you finish it on the way home. So I try to, I try to fit that mold, but uh, for the most part, when I'm, I'm trying to schedule time with people, I feel like I got to take advantage of all the time I can get with them, especially Chris. Uh, he's another fellow blogger my age. Uh, we're not talking about some kind of uh, famous celebrity. We're talking about another, another dude my age, um, kind of a kindred spirit when it comes to this stuff and he lives in Poland and and here I I am in Peru and we've tried to schedule or coordinate a time for a number of weeks now and uh, on my end I have to get up early so that we can record at 7 a.m which is not a big deal uh, it's just the quietest I can you know quietest time of the day I can find in this house if we're gonna do a um, multi-continent episode and then for him it's afternoon and and so uh, when I when I pin people down, I like to really just get everything out of it that we can, and I feel like we did that today. But yet, there's still plenty we could talk about, and and we're going to. Um, I've I've been in touch with praying medic, and we're going to talk about uh, the same types of things that Chris and I talked about, but with regard to self publishing. And so I don't know if that'll be on this show or praying medic's new podcast, but at any rate, uh, I want to encourage you to listen to this, even if you're not a writer. I think you will be inspired and get your own uh, aspect of encouragement out of it. Maybe you're a musician. Maybe you're another type of artist. Maybe you're um, going to be encouraged in another way. But we do cover a lot of practical, um, over-your-shoulder type of stuff. So um, this is getting long. Let me cut off here and introduce you to Chris Wilson and enjoy the show. Greetings, you're listening to Fire on Your Head, and with me over Skype, I've got Chris Wilson. Uh, so thank you, Chris, for finally being on my podcast for a change, and uh, how are you doing? I'm, I'm great, Steve. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure and blessing to, to finally get to be on your podcast. Right, and uh, I say finally be on my podcast because... Uh, the last time Chris and I Skyped, I was on his pod. Is that ever going to air, the, the episode uh, that we were doing? 
Uh, it is. There's a, there's a bit of a backlog. Right. And uh, we've been doing a few more live shows. Right. Well, um, no. it, it's, it's not actually my podcast, just to be right. clear. Right. So um, that's why I don't have full ownership over right. it. But it, it will come to light. <laughs> well, at any rate, I, I uh, we recorded one for uh, his the podcast or the the website you're a part of church mag mm-hmm. or you're mm-hmm. a part of many that's why that's why we're going to talk today about about blogging because you've got your hand in in several different sites i understand and mm. uh and so i i'm surprised that hasn't aired yet because i didn't know how long it would take but so if people are listening to this and then they listen to that show we recorded that one first <laughs> uh and you had and you had me on your um your youtube channel before where uh yeah. you interview authors and uh and Chris told me, you know, uh, our our show was like about twice as long as as I normally do them. And, and everyone, oh, it was so much fun! <laughs> yeah, I keep hearing from people. Yeah, Steve, our interview was longer than I normally do them, but it was good. And it, so I told Chris, just come on, we're gonna banter. There's not really a time limit. Uh, there only is a time limit in terms of how long we both have, uh, but mm-hmm. otherwise, uh, we're just gonna kind of yeah chat about writing, about blogging. So. I don't know where to start first, Chris. Uh, what's, what's, I don't know, how did you get started writing or how did you start fanning uh, that gift into flame? Oh boy. Well, I guess, uh, I guess it really started after I uh, left university. Like that would, that would be the real starting point. Before that, I had experimented a bit with some writing. Obviously, I wrote for my degree and uh you know i had a very old live journal blog which um i think i wrote like five articles on in the course of however long i had it and um you know i'd done a few things on a uh, blogger site where i i posted um mainly pictures of books i was reading i think was the thing (laughs) Uh, I I really hope it's gone because I would hate to read that now. But um, when it really started going was after I finished university and uh, it was 2008, the summer of 2008. So the, uh, you know, the whole banking crisis was in full swing and jobs in Britain were pretty scarce. And um, I didn't also really have a very firm direction of what I wanted to do. My degree had been in uh, politics. And uh, yeah, yeah, very, uh, very easy to directly choose a career path with that (laughs) one. Um, But um, so obviously, the career advice at the time was, well, you should try doing some writing because a lot of the more common careers that come from politics like journalism uh, or working for a politician, PR, things like this, you need writing experience. You need to be able to show that. So uh, the career advice I got was, you know, start a blog and start writing and, uh, you know, see how it goes. So I started a blog and uh, it's no longer up. And I really can't remember its name. <laughs> I was gonna say, I what was think, what was it about, or what was it called? The first one. I th- I think it was just like Chris Wilson's blog. I think okay. it was probably something like this. Clever name. I th- think, yeah, really <laughs> original. I think it was at Chris JW one three three dot wordpress dot com. It was a word free WordPress one. Mm-hmm. I'm fairly sure that's right because I was using that is my gmail at the time as well and it was uh so it started out well i'd studied politics so i started writing about uh british politics uh but also i kind of wanted to write about my faith as well and uh things that i was seeing experiencing uh conversations i was having around that time and, 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 you know, sort of the intersection of those two things. I had my dissertation actually was about a, uh, a church group in the UK, and it was looking at how it fitted into the mold of a, a pressure group and a social uh, movement and, you know, where that fell. So it was kind of a continuation on that in a way with looking at, you know, faith in politics. Um, So I was writing that and I ended up connecting with a few people involved in the British political blogging scene um, and started writing. Didn't write 
too much. Um, uh, at the same time, I started going along to a house church in my local area. So I was writing a bit about that as well. And um, yeah, that that was how it started. But it's changed so the, the what I write about has changed so much since. Right, because I was going to say I don't I don't know of any of your blogging about politics because yeah, I know you yeah. have these other uh, avenues. But yeah, well, I like that stopped. Uh, so I, I continued blogging about politics up until about uh, 2010, um, when uh, in Britain we had the election. Um, and then after the election, around, around the same time, I was doing my uh, training course in teaching English as a foreign language. Right. And I uh, completed my training course in teaching English as a foreign language. And then I went to Ukraine. Um, <laughs> and so kind of blogging about British politics felt a bit strange then um, uh, because, you know, it was a lot harder to keep up with the news. So that sort of changed a lot of the topics that I was writing about and a lot of what I was seeing. And um, and I think within about... Uh, I'd also changed blog by that point. I'd changed over to Blogger, so I'd lost all the original... Uh, WordPress uh, posts, and then um, so then I I changed over to writing a bit more about teaching English, a bit more about faith again, um, and you know my personal experiences living abroad as well, and, and that sort of continued um, for a while. <laughs> right. See, I I went the reverse from you. I started in um, Blogger uh, back in two thousand four. And, uh, I was still in, um, Bible school or I was in my third year back then. So I'd start blogging about, um, I don't know, I, I specifically started blogging about healings and, and, uh, my very first blog post was my mom's, uh, healing testimony, which is at the front of, uh, my healing book now. And, and then I would post it, like I would kind of journal, you know, things as learning, uh, street testimonies, you know, healings and stuff like that. Now during that semester, and, and I think for the first year, I was really focused on on healing, uh, believing that my audience uh, needed convincing. <laughs> you know that, uh, so so I would be very apologetic about healing, uh, and then gradually into like everything I was doing, uh, I went to I went to Holland. You know, so um, mm-hmm. so uh, not to put the the focus too much on me, but because uh, I have you on for this reason, but I but I started with Blogger, and then I went to. WordPress about four or five years later, uh, because when I started Blogger, it really, it really was not as um, user friendly and and mm. all the bells and whistles that has now integrated with Google Plus and your Gmail account and stuff. I mean, I I had to I had to do my own coding to put links yeah. on the sidebar, and then like a year later, it was a feature, you know. Uh, yeah, I had to, I had to well, figure things out on my own back when I started blogging, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I so I, I had started with WordPress.com, the, 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 you know, the free version, and it, it was nice. Like, there were some very nice things about the layout, but um, soon I wanted to do some extra things with it. Like, there was some uh, special JavaScript um, applications I wanted to embed. Like, I wanted to have a live chat one day and... You know, doing that on Word, you just couldn't do that on WordPress. Right. So, uh, WordPress.com at the time. Right. Um, and I think, you know, I think they've opened up a lot more in WordPress.com. Um, but uh, because I wanted to try those different things and experiment a bit more, I knew, and I didn't want to pay the money for a hosted WordPress site. Right. I didn't even know I, uh, what a hosted site was yet. Yeah. But what I liked is how WordPress had way nicer designs and webs in, uh, like with Blogger back in the day, there really was just kind of like, yeah, there was a lot of themes, but there was still this uniform kind of appearance all the blogs had. And WordPress, um, it, it, you know, they, they looked like website type of websites, you know what I mean? So for, Mm. for me, it wasn't the functionality like you're talking about, but the smooth appearance that, and, and I preferred WordPress right away after starting to get to really know how to use it after years of blogger. I hear people say blogger is easier than WordPress or no WordPress is easier than blogpress. 
but I think it's a matter of, um, uh, it's like Macs and windows, mm. you know, <laughs> whatever one you're used to using, then when you switch to the other, it, it seems like that is more difficult when really it's just, they're both easy. Uh, it's just a matter of getting used to each platform. Right. Yeah. But for you, it was a functionality thing. Yeah, it was functionality that moved me to blog uh, blogger. But then after, um, so so I think it was two thousand, and I think it was after my first year in Ukraine, or maybe I was still in my first year. So I can't remember if I was in my second year or still in my first year. I decided it was time to uh, go for a self-hosted WordPress site because I had uh, been following uh, John Saddington, who was tent blogger at the time. And, uh, and I'd heard, um, I'd read some of his advice and he had talked all about how, you know, the things you could do with WordPress, uh, self-hosted WordPress. Mm -hmm. And he also featured a a British hosting company who had pretty good rates. And so I thought, I, you know, I can afford, uh, I think it was sort of 24 pounds a year. (laughs) That's not too bad. I I can pay that. Um, so, so what's that in dollars for, for um, listeners who don't mentally do the conversion rate it's about i think it's about two thirds at the moment so 24 it'd be like 36 dollars okay i think i think yeah and that's about that's about what uh hosting will we'll, i pay about yeah. 40 a year for each of my sites or or i've got like a package or whatever so that's about yeah a good deal yeah it, it, it was a fairly reasonable deal and i'd been earning a salary for a while by this point as well whereas i think you know when i just came out of university and i was unemployed um all the money i had seemed <laughs> seemed very uh right. you know any expense was too much what? Uh, gas costs this much money <laughs> yes yeah. i know i i still know kind but, of <laughs> yeah I, I i kind of wish i i still had a bit more of that perspective really i think um me yeah with conversions between currencies it it's numbed numbed me a bit to how much the true value of something is right um especially you know british when you when you think oh that's only x pounds it's uh it's not the not right. necessarily accurate of how it is oh i know from, from going from north america to like uh peru where right now anyway and for kind of the majority of the time i've been here a, do- a U.S. dollar is like three souls, and everything mm-hmm. you know in this currency here, um, you you can feel like you're rich when you convert from dollars to souls. Uh, but that's not how like if you think in souls, you start to understand how much yeah. it costs here, you know, instead of dollars or or my culture, this is expensive or whatever, <laughs> you know. Well, it's uh, it's one pound equals five zloty here. Uh, in and, Poland. And here, yeah, you're in Poland now. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we'll keep following. Yeah. <laughs> so we're at 2010. and, and Okay. <laughs> yes, 2010, I started blogging. Uh, and I'm not sure what... Uh, I, I restarted blogging with a new vision, actually. It was. I'm not sure which site came first. I think they were... in. I think... Um, very recently, I had split my site into two different ones. So one was for English teaching, and one was for uh, my personal faith stuff, and kind of a diary to let my family know what I was up to, share pictures, stuff like that. And uh, so the, the English teaching one was to help me grow as a teacher, and uh, the faith one was to help me grow as a Christian and and share. And um, I set both of those up in fairly quick succession as self-hosted WordPress because I set when I set one up, I realized how much I really liked it and how much I could do with it. So it made sense to make the other one as well. And so from that, that led to some very interesting uh, things. Like I had both of them linking to each other, so you could easily switch between the two. But I, you know, the, the advice at the time was be, be a niche and uh, or niche whichever one it's actually supposed to be how do you pronounce uh, it? <laughs> i think i say niche but so I, I. I there are so many things i don't know i think it's supposed to be from french in which case that would make sense well that's why i call it that because i i learned that word first in in french 
because um, uh-huh. I, I grew up in Canada and went through French immersion. And sometimes I'd learn words in French that I didn't know what they are in English. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if yeah. any other bilingual or trilingual listener knows the feeling. And for me, that word is niche. And I listen yeah. to people say niche. I'm not going to correct them, but it comes out of my mouth as niche. But anyway. <laughs> I, 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 I think that's how people mostly say it in Britain, but I could be wrong there. I don't know. Uh, I I've don't... certainly heard both. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so the advice at the time was definitely, you know, niche yourself, um, focus on one target area and uh, don't cross over, don't cross pollinate. <laughs> Uh, because that you know the more niche you are the more uh true fans you'll get in a way right um so and that was that was yeah. quite good advice i thought at the time um so did i the, and i want to i want to jump in and footnote now uh before i forget later uh i wrote this down but i'll ask you now um because i too have heard for a long time if someone were to start a blog they need to focus on a niche and um have you know if, it, it can't be about anything and everything under the sun you need to focus um, and I heard that for a long time, but now, um, I don't, I don't know. It, like if somebody, if somebody started a new blog and I asked them, what's it about? And they couldn't tell me and they just said, ah, I just write about whatever I think, whatever I feel, whatever. Then you'd, I would be kind of bored and not even interested in checking it out. As opposed to someone who says to me, it's a tech blog. Well, you know, even that's still vague because tech mm. can mean it. Or, it's a photography blog. Okay. Well, photography of what? Or, um, uh, a, a podcasting blog. You know, I started one of those. Um, you know, so like then you go, okay, I know what that's about. Like, I, I have an idea what I'm in yeah. for when I go there. Whereas, um, some of the some of the very same bloggers uh, who had been kind of championing the idea you have to focus on a niche nowadays all say, no, 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 worldview or voice. Mm-hmm. So you can write about anything, but if you have a unique perspective a unique voice. And I feel like there's a balance between the two because, um, and, and so I, I, I'm just going to keep going with this and, and, and let you, uh, uh, answer or, or respond. Okay. Whereas uh, not every, I, I mean, I'm sure you've seen a lot of blogs. Not everybody understands what a voice is or how, how to write in their voice, you know, like, or, or, you know, maybe we can explore that in this conversation. And so, some people can pull it off and just just write about anything, and it will be funny or or interesting or or whatever it is they're how they're writing. And uh, for example, um, I follow a guy named Mike Breen. Uh, mm. He's he's also out of England, and his wife just posted something recently about how they're moving from one city to another, and it's it's kind of like a life update post, but she writes like every sentence with this with this way with words. That it's like, I don't care what she's writing about. I will read more of this. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like she could be yeah. telling me her experiences using the phone book to, to find the phone number of a friend of hers. I will read how she writes about it. You know what I mean? And, not, and so like not everybody has a way with words or knows how to write. And so they can't just pull off writing about anything they feel like, uh, whereas some people can, you know, and then other, other websites are like, information based or focused on something like I would imagine your political uh, blogging mm-hmm. would have a perspective or you could, um, you know, your own biases m- might be interesting, uh, to let through in your writing and stuff like that and, and give people a perspective. Like what does Chris Wilson say about, uh, this, uh, election for example. And so, uh, what do you, what do you think? I know, I know I threw a whole bunch of things on the wall there for you, but no, no, it's, uh, I think it's good. I think um, it's interesting because I think a lot of those people who are giving the advice, uh, in a way, they've matured in their understanding. And so perhaps that's why they've had a shift of perspective. I think um, the you know, niche, going for a niche is kind of uh, classic marketing. Right. And that's why people were advising it. I think uh, you know worldview. Perhaps that's uh, that's also in a way classic marketing, but perhaps it's it's a bit more complex. Like it's very hard to explain a worldview, whereas you know a niche. It's very it's so much easier to explain to someone. So I think um, that's why um, that's one of the reasons. Also, I think saturation of mm. the market is another reason why uh, niches aren't such 
great advice anymore. Um, you know, if you're if you want to start a blog about, I don't know, Tech. an Apple blog. <laughs> well, there's a hundred million of them. It, exactly. Um, so. Um, and, and it's like, okay, well, I'll take an Apple blog and I'll combine it with a topic else, another topic I like, uh, fitness. Oh, well, there's 20 others of those, okay, uh, with religion. Uh, again, Self-help. <laughs> there's <laughs> Self-help never been Apple one blog. of those before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, I think there's elements of that which have shifted people's perspectives as well. I think... Um, one of the comments you made right near the start actually reflects uh, the core truth, really. You want to be able to tell people what the site is about easily in like one uh, one sentence or a couple of sentences. You know, the classic elevator pitch idea that you're, you're in an elevator with someone. Someone asks you, what is your idea? What is your site about? You've got three minutes to explain it. And I think really, you, need, you know, it should be like a paragraph of text, which you could put on an about page. Right. And so if it's a worldview, that's easy. Uh, you know, that can be explained in a uh, in a paragraph or so. You know, or, we're or like a, group, a subheading or something even. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're a group of this type of people who believe in this, we're passionate about this, and so we do this or that. Uh, and uh, we're and a niche you can do that as well this is a site about this for these type of people or something like that and so i think uh even stuff like worldview you know it fits into that kind of simple descriptive uh, explanation of what you're doing right um i think it, it i think people like when you go outside of your core topic as well like you don't have to stick to one topic the whole time people want to know about the real person behind it right um and slipping in like your experience how this is useful for you um so for for church mag i've been writing a post up actually uh, i started it yesterday it's going to be quite a long one and it's about facebook uh promoted adverts because I've had some experience of using those with the English school that I was working at. Um, we had to get very familiar with how to use them because Facebook changed uh, the system. And it, uh, Facebook was one of our biggest referrals of students. Mm. So uh, we went from getting you know, sort of 100 inquiries a week uh, to going down to one or two. And so, you know, we needed to change that, how we were using it and learn how to use that. And so I've included a lot of very specific examples from that, which, you know, add that uh, element of uh, proof, you know, uh, and uh, authority that this is not just uh, my words. But at the same time, I'm saying this is our experience. This is what we were doing. So it may be different for you. I think it's a lot more interesting to see that and hear the story behind it as well, rather than just here are the facts. Right. Kind of. And and I struggle because I, um, as a writer, at least for my first bunch of years, yeah, I wanted to share my testimonies and stuff, but I, 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 I'm more of a, a teacher. I want to I wanna persuasively uh, convince you of something. Hey, look, I was just reading the Bible and I, f- I found this. God showed me this. Boom, boom, boom. I want to present facts. And, and even though I've, um, I've, you know, I've excelled at that. I've had a lot of people following me over the years. Uh, well, not a lot. I mean, I, I <laughs> but whatever. I mean, depend a lot being relative. Uh, so I've grown, let's just say in, in many ways. And, um, I remember around 2010, whenever I heard some advice, like you have to focus on a niche or, or what about changing the name of, of your blog, if you have to, or starting a new one or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, for a long time, I, I just kind of as a joke called my blog, just your average revolutionary. Uh, yeah. the, the idea being, well, like, uh, it, it's kind of like juxtaposed, you know, there's nothing average <laughs> about a revolutionary. Right. And, um, but at the same time, it's like, I want to be a catalyst for something with what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm just your average guy. So, um, I didn't like that name anymore. I still kind of um oh i love that name <laughs> i think it's i think it's cute but i don't know that it communicates anything 
Uh, you know mm, what I mean? Like if we're, ta- if we're talking about um, uh, focus and worldview and niche. So I, I, you know, it was cute when I was 23. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and it's because at, at the uh, Bible school as a part of, um, you know, we talked about a Jesus revolution, you know, a Jesus revolution that was just hammered into us. And, and uh, I don't say that disparagingly, but it was just, it was just hammered into us that there's this Jesus revolution coming and this third great awakening or whatever. And so it was kind of like, identifying with that in a way, but yet still saying, yeah, I'm just pretty average. You know, I'm just a guy writing. And when I started to hear talk about like niche and focusing on what you're writing about, I, I, I struggled in, in that whole kind of, um, trend of advice like that. And then I just kind of, when I started my, uh, I started in 2008, uh, fire in your uh, and then kind of changed the name to fire press. But, around 2010, I, I got a self-hosted blog for my own blogging, my personal blog. And I didn't know what to call it. So I just called it like Steve Brown. I just put my name on it. And I started to see more and more other bloggers doing practically the same thing, right? Uh, like Michael mm-hmm. Hyatt. Um, yeah. And for example, you know, other people, uh, Phil uh, Cook, uh, the various people who, they don't have a title to their blog, but their blog is kind of like this business card slash um, portfolio of writing. And so I, I, I wrote on Facebook, I asked for, uh, opinion. If anyone had, if they, th- when they thought of my blog, what did they think of? Like, did they have an idea that I, I don't know if I asked for a name, but like in one sentence, what do you think of? You know, and I, was, I was trying to come up with ideas. Like, what do people see? And, uh, and my friend David Hepting, uh, he wrote me and said, you know, I don't know what you should call your blog, but I would be interested in hearing more stories. You know, I would be interested in learning more. Like, you know, I, I enjoy your writing or however he said it. I hope I'm not putting words in his mouth. But I took away from his note, um, you should share more stories in what you're talking about. You should, you know, I'd love to know, like, how you're clashing with culture, what experiences you go through in Peru that are like, you know, a, a Canadian fish out of water. Uh, I would love more of that. And then sometime, you know, like, I, I, I took that to heart and I started writing stuff like that. But then whenever I discovered Jeff Goins, um, and I think like anyone who's ever started a blog seems to know who Jeff Goins is. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, and he said something like, you know, storytelling, you know, you got to include yourself in what you're writing or, or if you want people to connect with what you're writing, you need to, um, share your own self in, in what you're writing. And so I started to include, um, more of that. And, and, um, and sometimes my posts are just, experiences, you know, like, uh, uh, maybe I reflect or have some kind of spiritual application or something, but I'm learning t- to do that more. And wouldn't you know it, like way more people are sharing those stories or, um, you know, contacting me about something I wrote that they re- resonated with. And, and so I still like to re- like, you know, write persuasive stuff and try to, I don't know, show my opinion about, you know, a focus on having an opinion instead of trying to convince you. Scripture says X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. Like, why not let my, my personality through as well? And, and I feel like, okay, I, I wish I knew that when I started blogging, but it's like, I'm glad I know it now anyway, because I think I write much stronger uh, when I, when I include myself in the story. I, anyway, I'm throwing a lot at the wall for you to, <laughs> to, to take. No, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's interesting. Like, if you look at the power, like stories are really incredibly powerful and uh, you know, lots of people debate why, but the undeniable fact is they are powerful. If you want to remember something it's uh, or a series of things, uh, the trick, one of the tricks, the memory tricks are uh, think of a story and you put those objects in there as memory clues because it's easier to remember a story than just a series of or facts and like there's a reason why uh jesus taught in parables because parables are powerful rememberable and often they can have so much more depth than just the obvious message they you know they they're not like all the details around it can be powerful as well uh not just uh the actual specifics and you can put your you can empathize more when there's a character in a story how would you feel if this was you rather mm-hmm. than just the truth that is you know 
uh, this man was bad uh, and like a you know this man sinned and so the wages of sin and death and something like that but imagine okay there's a story and this man is the man who did something wrong and you can maybe you could have been that man like uh, so stories are incredibly powerful so i'm not surprised um that you found uh that shift has um has really been uh, really resulted in more people connecting and sharing uh i do wonder if like your next step is to start writing you know sort of upworthy titles of things like <laughs> uh, one day i was doing this and this happened you'll never believe what happened next no i'm never gonna go in that i hate i hate <laughs> clickbait type of uh blogging yeah. i hate uh, I just read an art. Okay, I'll, I'll, this is journalism. Okay, we're talking about not blogging. <laughs> but last night uh, on my tablet, you know, I'm reading news or something before kind of falling asleep. Um, and I, I, I kid you not, I saw a title that said, um, Man has testicles removed after um, raping a uh, teenage girl. And I'm like, what? I, I expect when I hear a title like, like, what do you think when you hear that title? What do you think you're about to read? a story about a guy who raped someone and then like for some reason the like the police removed his test like as a punishment or, <laughs> or something or like, like somebody this. has revenge on him or something like that. yeah that's that's what comes to mind right like uh yeah you know, I, I you know to this day after you know like a thousand blog posts or whatever i struggle with coming up with good titles sometimes other times yeah. i'm like the title comes first and i'm trying to fill in the the, the you know but I read a title like that and I go, okay, I got to find out what this is about. Did like vigilante justice? Did, did somebody, uh, who, you know, all these, all these <laughs> questions are evoked in your mind, right? Yeah. Who did this to him? Did some, did, was it her family? Yeah. Like a, you know, her father or maybe she's, she was married or, or a teenager was it, right? Uh, maybe somebody, uh, found out and went and served justice or maybe he got put in jail. You have all these questions because that provokes, a response in you and you want to find out what, mm -hmm. uh, what happened, why, you know, what you, you already have the incentive to click on this because that sounds like an interesting story. And you know what it was? A misleading title. Um, he had cancer. And so while he was in prison, he, you know, had to, for medical reasons, oh. have his testicle. It's like, what the heck did that have to do <laughs> with the raping uh, uh, of it's... the girl? And nothing. It That's had terrible. Nothing to do with it, with like X plus Y does not equal Z, but the the way this yeah. title was framed. So you know, I'm reading it going, "That's just a few steps shy of clickbait." Um, the other, the one know? that I, the other one which is really really annoying is when you have like the uh, list of ten things, and it's like number six will blow your mind or something, and like. You know, sometimes it is really incredible or something like that. And, but but ninety five percent of the time, yeah. it's pretty benign. <laughs> yeah, like I've seen, I've seen, uh, you know, bloggers who are doing like oh, blogging advice, and then like number five is incredible or something like this, and you read it and you're just like, no, that's fairly obvious, right? That's yeah, that's yeah. And then, I, and, I, and when my I mind has not been blown, right? And yeah. now, when I see bloggers or 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 article writers do that kind of thing i think they must not know how to write very good posts if they need to resort to this kind of like it it, it has the adverse effect on me now because i think we're all kind of getting accustomed to seeing that kind of stuff in our social media news feeds so now when i see that kind of thing i think it's going to be crap or you know what i mean like i've been let down yeah. so many times it's going to not be so i'm not going to bother <laughs> you know yeah i i deliberately try and avoid stuff like that there's um there's a podcast which i'm actively avoiding like they had a very controversial title and then upon further questioning there it turns out that they're not saying at all what they've said in their title and right. so it's really it's really annoying when uh, uh with a podcast it it i take a lot more to it takes a lot more to get me to actually read it with a with a blog post or something if there's a controversial title, if I'm good, if I'm going to criticize someone for that, uh, then I I want to make sure I read through it so I know their uh -huh. point, <laughs> so they can't because like it's I I know you've had it where someone is like, oh, you defend this, well, what about this? It's like, well, read read paragraph one, right. uh, <laughs> and and stuff like that. 
But with a, with a podcast, I feel I'm a bit more justified not, especially with something that is obviously clickbait. If right. it's in a case like that, I'm not going to read your article too. I, I had a, there was a while back, uh, about a year ago, actually now. Yeah, man, a year ago. Um, this blogger uh, was absolutely sl- uh, absolutely um, slanderously labeling claims against someone else. That and never I, happens on the internet. That never no. happens, I know. It was another <laughs> blogger, but I, so I was like, really? That's, that's a bit strange. What about this and this and this? And they responded by giving me another link to read. Mm. And I read the link and it had nothing to do with what they were saying uh, or my questions. So was like, there was probably a point in there they wanted yeah, you to get. There was, like, there was like one point or something. So, so I replied, thank, thank you for the link. Um, being British diplomatic, which, of course, anyone who understands <laughs> British British ease would know that that means um, why um, <laughs> or, or what, what a waste of my time or something like this. That's, know, not, where we're that's, polite, that's not just but, British. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, thank you for the link. Um, it wasn't – I'm actually in, – in my right now I'm typing – air typing what i what i sent but uh just just for a visual imagery um thank you for the link uh it it didn't address these questions which i restated um and uh and i i found it and it was on a different topic i found it a bit misleading to direct me to that and uh to which i got a reply well i've already written about this before so why why repeat myself here's another link for you to read for more of my position uh, i clicked on it again it didn't answer the questions i said it didn't answer your questions i suspect you might be doing this for uh to boost your numbers because um what, what of this put yeah but there you go that, that's um uh, and it's really disappointing when someone does that, especially as this was a Christian who was uh, who was doing it. And uh, I, uh, you know, that I ran a, a Christian bloggers community uh, for a long time, and and um, you, so you say that in past tense. I assume you don't anymore. I, <laughs> it's, it's awkward. Um, but what, what if I I got so disillusioned with running that community because um, you know there were some re- there are some re- there are some really nice I've met some amazing people including yourself Steve yeah from that and there are some really great people who really want to serve other people and that is so wonderful and then there are some people who just want to take from you yeah and they are just there to and they. And people like that get so vicious and so aggressive towards you, and they will use so many tricks to try and manipulate you. And it, and honestly, it just got t- it just got too much for me. I've tried to, uh, you know, I've tried to focus on the good things, but I I couldn't get around it. It was um, it was so discouraging. Um, you know, I have I haven't really talked about this much with with anyone but um you know when people are just screaming abuse at you basically over the internet calling you all sorts of things saying that you you know you're a heretic you're trying to stop god's word um and and, and to be honest uh, uh, or you've done this in an unloving way and sometimes there's some truth in it which is the worst thing you know when right. when someone says something and there's no truth it, it's so easy to ignore it but when it's something like you know why didn't you approach me more privately first of all and you're like man i, I really should have <laughs> yeah and and you know that stings and then when they follow up with you, you know that's sort of their jab and then they follow up with like um you know you're a bad christian boom it's like the right hook and it just um and uh, honestly I, I i guess i just had too many uh rounds of that at the community to really um passionately pursue it and um i'm the type of person who either i passionately pursue something um or it's or or it just plots <laughs> and so that's where it is at the moment it's kind of just stagnant like there are some other people who are doing some wonderful things with it and i bless them so much um but yeah it's now um, uh does that does that partic- you're talking about on google plus i, I realize yeah i am yeah. does that still exist 
and you're it just not as involved exist. or i'm just yeah exactly um, um well you know and, and this isn't uh, i mean you and i have talked about it i can't remember if it was offline or on your show or whatever but um any almost any facebook group or any google plus especially google plus i i have so little to do with almost any group i've ever been a part of on google plus um any of these communities um almost almost everyone i've ever been a part of it doesn't re- it doesn't matter the topic it doesn't matter the niche or what the focus is um they they sometimes degenerate into um that kind of thing like you're describing yeah. but but in in christian circles it's even more like where some people just behave in a way they never would if it was face to face at a table having coffee like you know what i'm talking mm-hmm. about right there's something about the internet yeah. that 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 uh that serves as a, as a buffer where, where it's appropriate or acceptable to be a jerk, even if you're a Christian <laughs> and, um, and it, almost every group I've ever been a part of it, and, uh, it has kind of d- degenerated into that or, um, or there's rules that, you know, to, to kind of counteract that there be, there's rules that, that wind up getting oh, enforced. Yeah. And then, and then people like me who are kind of casual visitors to the group, um, I, you know, like this week, I won't mention what, what thing it was on Facebook. I posted something and then right away, everyone's like, well, we made a rule where we're not, we're not posting that kind of stuff anymore in this group. I was like, well, I didn't know. I'm sorry. And, um, but it was just like yeah. the type of self-policing. I, I get it. I get it. If you're, if you're like in your position, for example, uh, trying to, you know, keep well, things it, calm. But other times it's just kind of like, well, this is why I don't participate, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, exactly as you're saying, that's why, like, that, that is a mistake I've made, like, where someone wasn't so active and then it's like, oh, we made this rule and we deleted your post and you should have known <laughs> or something. And then they're like, oh, I, I didn't know. And right. then you're like, oh, whoops. And, 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 and that brings something and it's up, so, yeah. When you've had such a negative experience with someone, uh, and, and then you'll get someone who, you know, you send them a message, you're like, hey, how are you doing? By the way, we've got this rule. Um, you know, please, please stick to it because it's a rule here. And then you get no reply. And then they do it again in the exact same way. And you're like, hey there, <laughs> me again. Right. Uh, this is the rule we've got. Here are the reasons why we're doing this rule. Um, it's actually a rule you signed up to when you joined because we sent you the rules. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. You know, no problems. Uh, send me a message if you've got any questions. And then, like, after that, you're like, hey, we removed your post because, you you know, you haven't stuck to the rules. And we sent you a couple of messages about this. Uh, you know, if you don't want to stick to the rules, then we suggest that you go to a different community and uh, because there are plenty of other ones, but this is why we have the rules, blah, 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 blah. And you get a message back like, how dare you impose rules on me with right. the only rules we should have are God's rules. And <laughs> Good, <man. laughs> True but you, story. But you, bring, you bring up this interesting point because, um, you know, as I'm marketing or, or promoting this episode of the podcast to um, people who, who, you know, want to get started in their writing or they want to um, use blogging as an outlet to, um, hone in on their gift. And, uh, and that, that kind of begs the question about like, you know, well, how do I get people to read my blog? How do I get people to know it exists? And so one of the obvious answers, uh, I mean, you know, I I think this is a newbie mistake is okay. I'm going to join all these different groups and spam them with my posts. And of course, as the author of your blog, you don't think, and you certainly don't feel like you're spamming anybody. You think, well, I've spent like an hour or two writing this and it's, it's so nice, so good. I, I put a lot of effort into it. It's not spam. Everyone should read, you know. So uh, you're, you're... And, and the other one is, um, you know, when someone says, oh, uh, so, so the comment that I'll often say is, you know, give something to your readers or something mm. like that. And they're like, well, well, I am. It's this brilliant blog post. Yeah, it's but my from, point of view. <laughs> <laughs> from the other side of it, you're, it's like, uh, here you go. Here's my gift for you. It's a commitment to read this for ten minutes or so. Right. You know, um, and, and I so get, yeah. And you know, I think of when I was 23. Some, you know, when I'm, I'm I mine my archives, uh, looking for stuff I can repost now that I have a bit of a, a bigger platform and stuff. And and I cringe when I read some of my old posts. You know, that's that's one of the good Ooh. things about not deleting them is is I can I can see my improvement. And one of the things I've learned is. Um, when it comes to blogging, when it comes to like blogging, you can get away with this more 
um, you know, you can, you can write whatever you want really. Right. But like, mm. if you want people to read what you're writing, it, whether it's a book, whether it's a blog, don't you feel like you have to answer the question, what's in it for me, for yeah. the person who's about to read it. And so, um, for example, I posted a post uh, a few weeks ago and I called it how not to suck at sharing your faith with complete strangers. Mm. And it got a lot of clicks, not a lot of comments or whatever, but click. A lot of people went and read it. Uh, and I think, okay, there you go. Like I, I communicated in the title kind of differently, you know, like you remember you commented on my post about uh, mediocre book marketing, you know, yeah. Um, like everyone writes how to do this good or perfect or excellent or, or <laughs> oh, I hate um, that. <laughs> but there's a, it's, it's kind of cliche or it's kind of well it's, established. Uh, so why not? The, es the essential guide to that's the one oh which is a, is a formulaic headline. So if, I, by the way, if you want a good headline that will get you, uh, uh, this is for the listeners direct. Yeah. If you want a, a good headline that will get you a few clicks, uh, the essential guide to is, is a good headline, but, um, but it is overused. Yeah. For it's, sure. it's pretty saturated. But it's like four points and it's like the essential complete guide to, <laughs> to something. Right. And I'm sure there's how not to suck at something. Uh, like, I'm sure other people do that, but not as much. I, I, I've started to do that a bit. I, I quite like that because usually <laughs> I start it off like, like I, I did one this week, which was on photography, actually. And it was why my street style photography sucks and why yours does probably too. Right. Uh, I, saw, so I'm not, I saw that show up in my feed. I didn't I didn't click on it yet. But yeah, if you're, not, thought, a, if you're <laughs> not a photographer, it probably doesn't appeal to you. Exactly. But, like I've seen... I've seen quite a few people who are like, oh, yeah, look at my street photo. Uh, and it, by the way, if you don't know, street photography is the style of just like documenting everyday life. Sure. And like some of the masters of it make these really cool photos. It's really, you know, you get these really interesting moments of social commentary out on the streets and stuff like that. And but the truth is that most people who I see share their street photography. It's, uh, you know, Oh, look, off somewhere in the distance, you can see like three people who are all on their smartphones. And this is social commentary about how everyone uses a smartphone. Right. Uh, but uh, yeah, that title did quite well for me, actually. So, uh, right. But you know what I did to tie, to tie in some other things we just talked about a, a few minutes ago is mm. I shared a story. That's all I did. <laughs> how to suck, how to not suck. I shared yeah. my faith. It was a story about how just on the weekend I had a complete stranger approach me and and, and, you know, I just kind of waste my time or I, I didn't, you know, answer her questions very good. And then some reflection on how that went and what I, yeah. you know, how not to let that happen again. And, um, and it was lengthy. That's, a, that's another thing too, is, is should it be short? Should it be long? Mm -hmm. Um, there's so many rules about how long a post should be. Some say long, some say short. I say, however long it needs to be. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I write 500 word posts. I've, I posted a 3000 word review of a Stephen King book uh, this week on my blog, you know, <laughs> uh, his memoir I... on writing and people read either one if they want to, if you can answer the question, what's in it for me. If I go ahead and read this, if I take the, and, and I now have a thing at the top of my blog, um, a, a plugin that indicates about you know, the, the, mm, the, I love that the average amount of time uh, it'll like take somebody to read the post. Like it says, it'll take you 18 minutes. It'll take you two minutes to read this. Grab a coffee. It'll take you 15 minutes to read this. Um, so there's this kind of like impression given to you right away. What kind of commitment this is going to require me if I'm going to go ahead and read this post. But I'm saying that to say the thing about the how to not suck or uh, 10 steps to mediocre book promotion. And, you, and and uh, you and I have kind of um, vowed not to talk about uh, self-publishing on, on this discussion and, and focus on blogging. But I'll say that to say um, what what blogging and self-publishing have in common that I keep seeing over and over and over and over again is when uh, people just go ahead and do some of the things they think are what you do if you want to promote your blog or promote your book, even if they are like well-established – not what you do, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the, the self, the, 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 the certain type of self-promotion, like spamming these groups, not answering, you know, moderators like you. Um, and, and I'd see these mistakes over and over. So it's like, instead of how to, how to be effective or the essential guide to, I thought, um, I'll go for lower hanging fruit. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Like, 
Or, yeah. or, or do you remember when Dustin uh, Stout posted that blog about the the red water? Uh, he called. I forget how, what he called it, but like where everybody is in this part of the the ocean. Yeah. And so why don't you write red about water, over blue here? water? Yeah, red water, blue water. Everybody's in the blue water trying to get their audience there. So why don't you write or post something in the red water uh, where there isn't? You anyone? mean you mean the red water because the red water is where ah, yeah, the sharks the blood. are yeah, where eating the blood is. Yeah. in the blood. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, so. So many things to say. A couple of cool tools you might want to know about, and this is like directly to you, Steve, but okay. probably to some other people as well. Uh, King Sumo Headlines yep. is a pretty cool, pretty cool little plugin that you can get. It allows you to A B test different headlines in your posts. I'm so you could put down. in, you can type out like, um, you know, 10 steps to not suck at whatever. <laughs> and then in another one, you could have like the essential guide to, and then your third one, you could have, I did this and you'll never believe what happened next or, you know, whatever. Uh, but also what's really cool is it will, it will show them uh, independently. And the more that people share it, share one type of headline over another, the more that headline will get shown. Mm. So it starts off, you know, everyone's shown equally. And then if people start to share this one more, uh, share A more than B, then A will start to be shown more. So uh, it will perform better. So that's that's a pretty cool one. Uh, another one, uh, that's a one-time fee, but I don't know how much it is. Another one that's quite cool is co-schedule. I'm using that. So, uh, you are, yeah, yeah. It's great for for sharing old blog posts, especially because uh, you can schedule when you're going to share it. You can schedule exactly what you're going to share on different social media networks, so you can make sure that it looks good for uh, the place that you're going to share it. Well, what I uh, like about co-schedule, uh, and so for those listening who might not have heard of it or know what you can do with it, um, you can try it for 14 days, and then mm. there's a uh, I think, like the cheapest is I think I think ten dollars a month. Uh, I think know. it's nine, actually, but yeah. nine nine something a That's month. Same right? thing. I just <laughs> I, I I hate marketing where they yeah, I I I round up to like you know it's it's ten dollars for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's you know how in marketing it's nine nine ninety seven dollars. Yeah, ninety seven. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, Chris and I have something else we're going to let you know about a, a tool. But uh, with regard to the editorial calendar. Okay, you know how there's a calendar in CoSchedule, and I'm sure you guys might use something like that in uh, Church Mag or, or a site with. Yeah. It's, it's useful for sites with multiple authors, um, uh, but for me as a, as as a personal blogger, uh, I use it to spread. Like I've got like 60 drafts on the go. I've got I, I looked in my my drafts folder, 60 of them. I got like a dozen of them that are like, you know, I'm working on and I, I want to post soon. And so, um, I've started using the editorial calendar with the exception of this week, because I took the week off to, to write my last book, I'm using it to spread out my content so I can see kind of like on a calendar, um, you know, when I'm posting stuff, instead of having like five posts that are ready and then boom, 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 post them all one after the other, and then go in like two weeks without writing anything. Um, I'm, you know, I'm seeing the value of spreading things out and seeing on a calendar what that looks like. And, and then not only that, but scheduling when they're going to, post on social media because um you know if you want people to see them some social uh, networks are better th better than others at certain times of the day um you know that's something you have to play with and, and see what works for you um but anyway yeah i use uh, co-schedule that's it's something great. i'm recommending now um okay going back to your point then let's <laughs> yeah. uh how to get your like uh, let's say how to get like your first a thousand first thousand visitors or something to your right. site uh because i think that's a that's a nice good number to how aim to for. not suck at promoting your blog how to not <laughs> suck but not necessarily master it um <laughs> so i think i think there are two challenges like the first part is actually getting the first people there and then after that it's keeping people and making sure they they then become your ambassadors. And so like there's lots of things you can do to make sure that you know your content's good. Uh if you've got um a good headline and stuff like that. Headlines are important because mm -hmm. um how many times have you seen a headline and known you are going to share it even before you've read it? 
uh, a few times actually. It's not I've, it's not as common as maybe you're suggesting. Oh uh, well, I uh, there are some times where I see uh, like Mashable can do it quite yes. well for me. I don't know why, but there are some times where I see the headline. I'm like, and I'm clicking on it. I'm like, I can't wait to share this. I can't and, wait to see uh, what it is, I, but I'll share it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I'm going to share it before I've read it. And it's uh, so there. There definitely are where you and, and then there are times when you see a headline. And you're like, this is a bit weird. I don't know what it is, and maybe you click on it, and you know you. Uh, because each time you share, like I've heard someone explain it like this, every time you share something, you are spending your social uh, resource. Yeah, social capital. Social capital. And uh, if people like it, you get your capital back with interest. If people don't, you lose it. Because right. uh, the next time, um, the next time they may not, uh, they may not click on your link because they think, ah, oh, Chris shared that la- thing last time and that wasn't very good. So pff, do I really? And like Facebook is actually turning that into a real thing. Yeah. The more you interact with someone, the more you will see of their stuff. The less you interact with someone, the less of their stuff you will see. So it's it's not just a uh, you know a thing that goes on in your head psychologically. It's actually a thing that happens on social networks so that's that's one side and basically you've just got to write good things have a site which looks nice um use good graphics and all all that sort of stuff you got to work on your craft of writing make sure it's good topics um and a headline helps a lot so (laughs) on, on the social media side like there are tactics you can use that will possibly get you a few people to click through and and see it but um, ultimately, these are, you know, it's always short term success. Right. After a while, people will get annoyed. And if you don't have the second element of it, even if they decide to follow you, um, if they see, you know, that you're publishing uh, inconsistently and, and things like this, um, they're not going to keep following you, they're, even if they stay beyond the first time. And that's, and why, I think, I, that's why I use CoSchedule, right? Is Because yeah. is, I go, you know, I think a lot of bloggers go through droughts. So that's where scheduling things so that there's consistent uh, publishing because I try to publish at least one thing per week. Yeah. And uh, some weeks I'm, I'm scheduling uh, to spread my things out on, you know, one per day instead of like five all at once or something. So yeah, I hear you. Um, so I think also you've got to remember that with communities, a lot of, a lot of them have, if, if it's a good community, then people know and, uh, they know who to listen to. They have trust and uh, they connect with people. So if a stranger suddenly turns up and is like, hey, read my post. Uh-huh. Or it's like, stranger turns up and it's just like, blog post link. Why? Then people, <laughs> no one's going to pay any attention to it. You have to um, build trust and value and uh, you know connect with people. That's what people want on a community. It is a high investment um, and... But in the long term, you know, if that works, then they will share it with their networks and they will spread it out. Um, I would seriously suggest, like, I would seriously suggest you choose one social network, you choose one or two communities, big ones, and you work slowly. At first, don't even bother trying to share a post, you know, other mm. than, you know, hi, this is me. Here's a link to my blog or something like that. Uh, here's my about page. Do that, and if you introduce yourself like that, I guarantee you people will click on your about page to find out more about you, and if they, and then they'll click on your homepage and they'll read a post. I guarantee it. Right. Rather than if you if you go into a new community and drop a link, maybe some people will click it, but I doubt it. Yeah, I've um I've tried everything. I've tried things that I know won't work just to see if I'm correct <laughs> that they won't work. I've tried other things that sound like good ideas just to see what kind of group it is. And um, there's this one group on Facebook, not mentioning names, but it is like yeah. 15,000 uh, members. <laughs> and um, I I've, I've go on there and I ask questions, like ask questions and yeah. nobody answers. So, yeah. But then you go and you look and all it is is just a, a, a link dump of everybody posting their own stuff. Like everybody's um, trying to make withdrawals, but nobody's making deposits. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I see that all the time. I see I see bloggers, I see writers who don't understand that if you're not making deposits, there is no withdrawal to make. 
Um, you know, I, uh, I see people all the time. I, that's that's the, the analogy I'm going to use. And, um, you know, I've got this one friend who um, he told me, you know, Steve, nobody clicks on my posts. I, I don't get any, I, you know, I've got all these followers on Facebook and uh, I'm trying Google Plus and, and uh, I don't see, um, you know, if we're, if we're talking about social media, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this in there. But I, I do want to get some talking with you about uh, writing. Yeah. With, um, with regard to this, he, this, this particular friend said, you know, I, I share, um, I share all my posts and, you know, I hardly get any traffic. I hardly have anyone go visiting my blog. And so I, I, I mentally thought to myself, well, whenever I see this person's face, their, their name show up in my newsfeed, it's always for just a blog post of theirs. So I, I double checked. I went and looked at their Facebook mm. page, their Google plus page, their Twitter, and all it is, is them posting their content. So I told him, look, it could be because people are tuning you out uh, because all you do yeah. is post just your stuff. You don't post anything else like um, articles you find helpful. You read something in the news or maybe you're posting pictures from, um, you know, just post sharing quotes or things like that. And so I, I, I use the phrase self-promotion. People think it's self-promotion. He goes, yeah, well, yeah. Um, it's not self-promotion. The Holy Spirit inspired me to write these things. And so pe <laughs> exactly. people would be, people would be um, benefited if they read my post. It's not self-promotion. I'm like, no, no, no. So it's like you don't understand what the definition of self-promotion is. You're prom it's, I'm not talking about your, your arrogant and promoting yourself. I'm saying if all you're doing is saying, hey, read what I wrote – and never sharing anything else, then people kind of, that's, that's how it is. They, like, yeah. you, like you said, uh, Facebook kind of makes things get relegated to the background if people aren't clicking on them as opposed to if they are. And especially this, per this person in particular doesn't really write very persuasive uh, titles. I mean, you know what the post is going to be about, but they, they don't, they don't follow any of those, uh, uh, you know, they don't have a, fin nice. they don't, they don't have a finesse for, for writing <laughs> clickable titles. And, but you, you see the post, and you know, what it's going to be about. And so, you know, I, I, that's, that's, that's the kind of thing that I had in mind and was inspired by when I wrote my post about mediocre book promotion is because, um, uh, like I'm going to be talking to praying medic soon. Uh, I don't know if it'll be on his show or mine it, about, uh, self publishing. Uh, but for every, every one or two people like him or, or Jeremy Mangershine or people who are really making it happen in self publishing, I, I have like 10 other people who either talk to me or, or contact me and they're like, I can't sell my books. People aren't buying them. What do I do to build a fan? But, you know, and, and then I, I kind of look into it further and they're just doing things that suck or, or, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not, um, putting the effort into some of these things we're discussing or, or you, yeah, go, I, or you go to their Facebook and all they do is promote themselves. And well, mm -hmm. then I can predict what's going to happen. I'll, I'll be honest. Like I don't, I don't follow all the advice I know is true. Like the the sure. classic, uh, the classic thing I've heard from uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and Michael Hyatt is that you should share like four things which aren't yours for every one that is yours. Oh, I've heard it even higher, like eighty percent not yours. Yeah, I've heard eight to one as well, which was from uh, who is that? Who is that? Uh, it was uh, Guy Kawasaki. Is yeah. eight to one, um, uh, like yeah, the the Google percentage, uh, twenty twenty percent time. So I think um, e like I think four uh, four to one is much better than one to one, you know. Um, and it's uh, I think maybe that's a good starting point, and then maybe you try and build up to like eighty percent is is other people's things. And I think it's also you know even like going along with yeah, you've been inspired by the Holy Spirit great but also other people have as well remember that and sure. remember that it's great to share other people's mm. and when you share other people's content they will connect with you and uh they will be like oh thanks you know but especially if you share people who are around the same level as you you want to share like highly experienced people's work right. people who are like big names but you also want to share people who are at the same sort of point as you you know include like a at on twitter or something like that mention them in the post and then that does help build uh connections and links with them oh, and i i don't do that a lot <laughs> to right. be honest and i could uh but there have been some things where I've done things like that, like I've uh, shared other photographers' work or I've shared posts from other people, and then I've noticed them suddenly appear in my feed. And I'm like, 
man, you, you read, and they leave a comment. Right. It's like, and, wow, you read. And you know what, something, uh, Chris is, uh, uh, people don't know this, but my new website design, uh, Chris gave me this template, uh, which is, which is for blogging. It's for writers. Uh, and I really like it. And it's, it, it, it helps, you know, with, um, my, my layout being more focused on the writing. And, um, and then second to that, I've also been trying something for the last month. Uh, now that the newest version of WordPress has um, press this, you know, the mm. a, a Chrome uh, extension. I um, noticed. Sorry? I, I noticed that actually. Okay, yeah. So, so do you I didn't know how you were doing it, but I noticed the change. Yeah. What change in particular are you talking about? Uh, you so know you've where I'm going been with this? Sort of reblogging other people's articles where you share someone else's article and you add some commentary about exactly. it as well. And um and and I I've been telling people for like two or three years, um if if what they want to do is blog often, one one way of getting inspired to do that and have the ability to do that is respond to stuff, um yeah. have an opinion about something you came across. Because uh, every what 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 happens is is a lot of people just reshare on Facebook, they they reshare on their mm -hmm. social media, Twitter, whatever, and have arguments or discussions there, and um, so instead of really getting sucked into internet debating, it's like my 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 uh, keyboard time on the internet, I focus it into whatever book I'm working on. I focus it like some of my books exist because some of my blog posts over the years have been, okay, I'm going to answer questions I know people are asking and I'm going to put it in one place so I can constantly share this over and over again. Um, that That's a part of how I blog, right? But because the niche I'm trying to focus on, if you want to call it a niche, has to do with discipleship and missions and, and, and things like this and organic church movement and whatever. Um, when I see posts or now, I, you know, I, 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 I'm posting about writing and podcasting. So, so that's why I'm having uh, Chris on the podcast talking about writing, <laughs> you know, it, it's in line with my, my, my focus, if you want to call it instead of a niche, my focus. And so when, sometimes I come across posts and I'm like, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and write something like this myself, I press yeah. this, uh, it leaves a link to your, the original post and I, I cite some things, I quote some things and, and, you know, encourage the reader to go to it and I write my commentary. And, and lately I've, I've come across quite a lot of stuff about people who are done with church. Well, per <laughs> that's perfect. It fits. It, it's not like some other clickbait type of thing. It's, con yeah. it's consistent with what I'm writing and blogging about. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm. I don't know, uh, posting something about Justin Bieber or something just to get clicks. It's like, it's, it's consistent with what I'm writing about. And, um, and some of those have gotten reshared out the wazoo. And so another thing I've been doing is using co-schedule to, um, uh, you know, schedule when those posts go on the internet and on Twitter, repost them like four times, a total of four times. Uh, wow. guy, guy Kawasaki says to post, he posts every one of his own articles four different times the same day he publishes it. Uh, I've heard other people say, you know, you got to do it like the next day, the next week. And uh, co-schedule has some default uh, times in there for you to, to use. So I've been doing that. But when I, when I repost something that's, or when I post something that's um, kind of like a repost or a um, response to another blogger or something on Twitter, I tag them as well. So like when I'm posting it, I say like, mm. this is a response to what, um, Chris Wilson wrote, you know, and sometimes they favorite it or retweet it themselves to their audience yeah. and drive a bunch of traffic to it. And, and I get new subscribers on my emailing list or, um, new likes on Facebook and stuff. And so it's like, man, I, part of me wishes I was doing this earlier, but I I've seen this spike in traffic in the last few months now that I've been, um, but I, but I'm also blogging just the same as before, you know, I'm still doing the same as I was before. But sometimes um, this is a non-spammy, non-markety way of kind of like getting other people's attention. Like, hey, I really like it's, it's like I like what you wrote. I don't. I hardly ever do it when I'm complaining or disagreeing with someone. You know what I mean? It's like I, I liked this post of theirs. Here's my thoughts on it. Here's how it relates to my life. I think you'll like it. Check out the original post, and I tag them in it. And sometimes they share it themselves. You know. 
it's it's a really good uh it's a really good thing to do i've uh, uh there's a few which like i'm writing i've got one in progress which is a sort of like hey this guy shared this and i thought i would uh do my own list which is kind of similar to his list but builds on it Right. And that's uh, that's something that I've got coming out, and I suspect I suspect he'll share it as well because it's it's a bit more niche than the thing he shared, uh, so I think it will it will come out. I've not not finished it yet though, right. uh, and I think it's it's such a nice thing to do it in that way because you are saying, hey, go read this other person's exactly. thing, and it's such a like especially with the press this um, extension, it's such a clear like go to them type uh, call to action. And then you're also adding value. It's not just reposting the same thing. Like tech blogs, are, tech blogs are terrible for you know a new story comes out like oh Google has a new um, widget, and then you see it all across the internet with no extra commentary, but slightly changed words in different order to, right. so that you know they haven't just copied and pasted it. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, I think we should go on to the actual stuff of writing sure, because yeah, I'm seeing the time we've got. Right. And uh, I think, I think this good has been good do. stuff. This is definitely useful for people. But uh, yeah, if I'm going to market it about how to, how people can, can get writing stuff. So let's go. What? How do you, um, I don't know, where do you want to start? Because I, I realize the time is running out. Okay. So should I tell you, look, I'll start off with where I'm writing for at the moment and okay. what I'm focusing on. And then should I go through my writing workflow and maybe you could compare it to yours? Oh, sure. I think that would be quite cool. Um, so at the moment, my main writing is for Church Mag. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a community website. Uh, any, if, you, if you're listening and you want to write for them, you can do. We are always looking for people to write for them. I've been taken on as a staff writer this year. So I've got a year commitment, which I, I, you know, a kind of, it's a verbal commitment I made with the owner, Eric, that I am going to publish one article a week for them uh, over the course of the year. And there's three others who are doing it as well, like that. And uh, it's a website that's, uh, you know, kind of about church technology, enabling the church. And it's quite geeky as well. It's kind of, it's got a geeky, nerdy worldview. You know, right. we love, we love computer games and we're not afraid to admit <laughs> it type thing. Like there's a series they're doing on Minecraft where they talk about like theology whilst playing Minecraft and stuff like that. So, you know, that's kind of our worldview and that's what we do. And it's, it's, it's getting kind of big. We've also put out some books, some eBooks along with it. But that's where most of my writing is at the moment. Uh, I've got a personal site, which uh, I've had for ages, which is chrisjwilson.com. I've got it open here in my, I've got that among others open here. (laughs) Now, so this is the really weird thing. Most of my religious writing is now going into church mag. So the stuff that I'm writing on that site is more link blogging where I just post a link to a, uh, uh, to something interesting, kind of like the way that you do the, uh, you've been doing the press, um, Mm -hmm. press this, but in a, in an older style. So it's not got all the nice, interesting stuff. Uh, I also occasionally will just write my very personal reflection. So it's kind of like more like a diary online. It's mostly because I find it therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Um, then uh, I still have a few old sites around from different projects, like my English teaching site's still around, but I don't do, I don't write for it a lot anymore. Um, but the main other area that I'm pushing at the moment is uh, is with some of my photography. So I've started taking a lot more photos recently, and we've been giving some of them away with Church Mac. And so I'm writing about how I'm learning photography and how I'm challenging myself with photography. But I also want to help create resources to uh, from photos that people can use. Can, I'm going to talk about the creative process as well. Uh, so it will probably cross over. And I, I'm actually starting to think maybe this will be um, a lot more about me rediscovering that sort of artistic side, which I have kind of denied. Like I've kind of been focusing on on persuasive marketing copywriting side of me for the last few years. So I'm, so that's a different side. Um, I'm probably going to give away some photos for to people that they can use in blog posts and stuff like that if people want to check it out. 
and that is Chris J. Wilson dot photography. So a strange end domain, but a nice one to get. So that that's why I'm writing at the moment, really. Um, and uh, I really like it. I really like writing for Church Mag. Um, it's been so great to have this community site where I get to. Uh, we've got a Slack channel, which is like this discussion community where we can send each other messages, we can share ideas, you know, sometimes we'll give each other, you know, we'll come up with a post idea and someone else will be like, oh, I can write that. Mm-hmm. Which, and you're like, go, go for it. And I think we publish about three or five posts a day. And um, the really nice thing that I found about it is because um, I can write uh, a load of short posts but then I can write really big, in-depth, um, powerful posts now right. as well. So, like, the one that I've uh, just uh, – like, the one of the ones that we just published was a review of email clients for 2015. So we went through – I went through a whole host of email clients that people may want to use and reviewed them for – you know, all sorts of perspectives and then said like, okay, if you want one that does this, then you probably want this client and stuff like that. And we did one with uh, task management at the start of the year. And both of those are about 5,000 words long. Wow. <laughs> but that's the, sort of, that's the sort of thing you can do when you work on a community site and you've got enough um, space to breathe in right. a way with your writing because you know someone else will put out a post. And if you don't put one out this week okay but next week you know you can put out a much bigger one and um and there's a few other ones that we've got coming which i've written so for example like i've just written one about how to make your church website friendly for dyslexic uh people and that's about two thousand words long uh there's one which is um which is coming up which is uh i've completely forgotten uh the facebook ads one again that's about two thousand words long and, and going back to what you said about how long it should be, I think it should be concise but long is what I'm moving towards for me. So in that it's to the point, you're not adding in anything that you don't need, but you, I really want now to cover a topic really well. Right. I want to, like, there's so many sites which are doing these, for a while, we were all going towards like 300 words or 500 words was like perfect. But now I'm moving more towards like I want to be around the 1,500 to 2,000 words for uh, for a guide to something. I really want to crush it. I want to make it so that, you know, this is something which uh, you'd start with and you'd be like, oh, really? Do do I need to care about this? But right. by the end, you're like, okay, I care about it. And this is my plan of action for how I'm going to change it. Right. I think it depends on what you're writing. Yeah. And definitely. for me, there's no rule, but there's some things where I write and I go, this needs to be short or nobody will read it. Then there's yeah. other things where I'm writing because I, I want to write this, whether anyone reads it or not. Obviously, I'd rather people read it. And so I don't put a limit on myself. And my, my review this week, I posted of Stephen King's book. Uh, it went that way. It went long instead of short. Uh, and I was like, I knew I need to do this. And then I, I've had people tell me, yeah, I read the whole thing. You know, I, I, I loved it. I, I'm going to go buy that book. I'm going to do something with what you told me. Uh, whereas sometimes like one of these articles I press and, um, uh, or like this story about me leaving my laptop on the, on the subway yeah. one year in Holland, um, that needs to be as long as it takes to tell that story. But people, you know, but people are not going to, they're not going to read the whole thing if, if, if it's like, uninteresting mm-hmm. or um you know some of some of these posts don't need to be long other posts it's like um it would not serve the reader or myself if i don't just write until I, it it's it's done and, and and out of my system and um so i think it, i think there there shouldn't be like a fast hard rule about no. how how short or how long a post needs to be it all depends on what type of website it is what type of content you're trying to write um all sorts of things but if you can't answer that question, what's in it for me? <laughs> Cause mm-hmm. the, I mean, even though that sounds selfish of, of the reader, but that's how we read. If I'm going to take the time to go to this and read it, what's in it for me? What am I getting out of it? If I did, um, then if you're not answering that question, um, then longer is, is, is useless, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's true. 
yeah if it's help like helpful is really powerful i've yeah. um uh and it's funny actually realizing it, i've been uh writing for my, my personal site all of those things are really short now like they can be under like 300 words is the minimum that you should have for seo values really like the plugins all recommend you if you've got under 300 words are like hey maybe you want to bulk it up a bit but uh i know that with my personal site i've i've been writing a lot shorter ones and kind right. of just yeah who cares um seo meh. Okay. um so so seo um, let's talk about scrivener let's talk about however it is you're writing these days ah uh, okay so um for blogging writing uh most of the time i have a s- strange workflow i use an app called ia writer pro most of the time it's uh, a tool that lets you write in markdown which is how i like to write and what you can do is uh, it works on iphone ipad mac uh so you can start an idea on an iphone like draw outline something so you know title subheadings uh engaging building question at the end and then just leave it then you can continue that on any of the other devices and you know expand it and then copy it convert it into html paste it into a website and it's all saved Uh, i've never had any problems with losing a blog post from that so that's the tool that i use most of the time but um i also use evernote because sometimes uh because i'm i do app reviews for church mag so sometimes i've got an android phone sometimes i've got an iphone Mm -hmm. and uh so if i'm writing uh for on android i'll write it in evernote usually to get the outline Uh, but I, i really hate writing a full post in evernote so i may switch it over to i usually switch over to ia writer at some point it can also let you highlight syntax, which I find, uh, because I'm dyslexic, it's, it's quite useful for me to see. Uh, I find the syntax highlighting is a good way to uh, see what I don't normally see. So it stops me from um, reading what I think is there and helps me to read what is there. Okay. Because, you know, certain words pop up, pop up and then uh, uh, and then you can check, oh, crap, I've... Uh, written you know there not there right <laughs> so um it's really useful for for doing stuff like that for me well I, the, um, you know if the, i'm right sorry the, you know the way i'm uh, using evernote these days um okay. is because i because i got a kindle fire tablet uh ah. i have to find so many workarounds uh, yeah. and and if anyone's followed me on social media you know my love hate relationship with the kindle fire and how i regret getting it but it's cheap <laughs> Um, and so because there, you can't really do anything with Google, anything. Yeah, of course. Oh my goodness. So I, I couldn't use Google drive anymore for sharing things. I had to, so I started to use Evernote and, um, for my notes when I'm teaching and stuff, I can use it on my phone or my tablet. But, um, if I'm reading books, cause you know, 95% of what I read is Kindle books. Yeah. And I'll, if I want, it's like, it's hard to quote things from your Kindle. Uh, there's there's not very good mechanisms in place yeah. for copying and pasting if you and and citing things and quoting things, um, and and so I found that I could share notes to I could share quotes to Evernote, yeah. and um, and so that's that's how I've been using Evernote. But uh, anyway, continue because I, no, I, I I really like um, I I do really like Evernote. I love saving web pages to Evernote if I want uh, for saving things for later. And I uh, all my lesson plans are saved into Evernote. So I use Evernote. I use Evernote a lot, but uh, I don't like writing a blog post there. Me neither. Um, I don't write anything really in Evernote. It's I copy and paste a lot to it from elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just uh, you, uh, and the formatting issues that you can sometimes get. So uh, you know you have to press uh, command, uh, copy, and shift. Like the, you know the copy command will shift. If you do that, it will. Uh, sorry, when you paste, paste with shift held, and it will take away the formatting. Right. Usually, because Evernote adds in its own formatting, so that's really annoying. Right. Um, Scrivener is how I do most of my longer writing. So for something like a book, 
Uh, so I've put out a couple of books, one with Church Mag Press um, and uh, one a short story, which will never see the light of day uh, very happily. <laughs> right. Um, and one with, uh, fiction short story. Uh, and one was uh, one that we gave away with Christian bloggers and uh, the community. And um, I also use that more now for the mega posts that we do with uh like the longer posts that i'm writing for church mag i'll usually write them in scrivener as well because uh you can jump to different parts so it's really so especially for doing app, like a roundup of app reviews i can have one section where i've got you know the android ones one for uh ios one for apple things and stuff like that or if it's a you know a really long guide i could have the introduction the uh, main bulk and the conclusion i used it also to do my uh my uh, assignment that i had to do for my from teaching last year and i had to submit it in in microsoft word but i could lay it all out with the different sections in scrivener so i'm i'm a big fan of scrivener for longer writing um but for for shorter things uh, especially as i can't get it onto a mobile device um i know there are some workarounds where you can have a sort of mobile tool that you write but um right yeah I, i'm the opposite i i hate writing on mobile i hate even if i get an email i i <laughs> if i'm home i i go to my my office i go answer it on yeah. on, on the computer um but uh, i use scrivener as well for blogging like like I have a, a document I made and I called it blog post incubator just for a nickname. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if I want to sit down and I, I'm feeling inspired, then I, I open like one of the ways I use Scrivener for, for the podcast or for the, I have one for the podcast, one for the blog is, um, I, I have a folder or whatever you call that thing on the left hand, uh, tab and mm. it's, it's posts I'm working on. And then as one is, is really complete, then I, copy and paste it into WordPress and I might make changes and stuff to it there, put pictures in it or formatting and whatever. Um, but I definitely use Scrivener even for shorter things. And sometimes I'm writing something I go, this is going to be long. Should I podcast about this or should I break it in, up into pieces and make a series? Um, I, I do all that there first. And then with books where something is in me and I'm like, you know, this is, this is book. I got to write a book. And not a, I got to write a, even if it's a short Kindle book, I'll, and we'll take it from there. And so I use Scrivener for that purpose. I wrote almost all of Nine Lies People Believe About Speaking in Tongues in Scrivener um, mm. because of how useful it is to write long documents. But, you know, I, to, to be perfectly honest, you know, I have people ask me all the time, like, well, what is Scrivener? Okay, well, I've downloaded Scrivener. I don't, I can't make heads or tails out of this. Mm. And I, I downloaded it for my Mac about two or three, at, at least three years ago, I suppose. And I had no idea what to do with it. I looked at it and I'm like, well, what makes this easier than, um, I liked writing with pages. Um, the, the mm. Mac version, the Mac equivalent, not the version, but the equivalent <laughs> of, uh, of, of words. Word. And oh, I lo I loved it much better, but it doesn't, solve the problem of if I'm writing a long document, what do I do? Do I keep all my chapters in one folder and then open them individually? Or do I just write one big long document and the scroll bar gets tiny? Um, and, uh, but I, I did like how smooth and how things for pages run. But then when people edit my documents for me, they, they almost at, all the time they want word. If they're going to, yeah. if, if I'm going to send it to them, it needs to be word. And so I'm like, well, why, what's the point of Scrivener? Uh, you know, it's this other thing. What do, what do you save the documents from there as? And so I had it for like a year on my computer and I realized the 30 day trial is like 30 days of using it. Actual use. Yeah. yeah. So it was, like which I, is great. <laughs> yeah. So I still had like 28 days or something of use with it. And it was you who posted something. I forget exactly what it was, it was on now. Church Mac about uh, like uh, Bible study plans or it, something like this from uh, uh, using making a Bible study plan on Scrivener or right. keep it no keep your Bible study notes. Yeah. So this was something I I had done. Actually, I forgot about this. But, right. Um, I was keeping like I was studying the Bible and I was writing down my notes as I studied right. in Scrivener. And I never used Scrivener that way, but like when I read your post and, and I read it carefully, I was like, ah, it gives me ideas of things I can do with Scrivener. Okay, it's it's, it's worth its, its you know, it, I'm seeing 
how I can use it. I'll, I'll put some, I decided I'll put some effort into learning how to use it. And that's, that's the, that's the good thing and the bad thing about Scrivener is it's when you know how to use it, like for me and now it's my, my default word processor. That's what I use. I, my 30 day trial ran out. I bought it. It was, it's, um, I think it's like $40 for the Mac and similar for the, for windows. But, but there's this steep learning curve you have, you know, and, um, and, and I guess it's on that note that I'll, 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 I'll talk about this other, um, uh, lesson or, or, or teaching series, but with, with Scrivener, it was like, yeah, I had to, I had to take some hours to learn how to use it. Um, I had to look at some other documents of, of what people had done, uh, with Scrivener, but then it was like, but now that I know how to use it, it's easy as pie. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, I, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's, it is a strange interface and I can't remember how, or like I'd heard someone talk about the benefits of this for writing. And as soon as I saw their, their sort of layout of where they had like uh, different chapters of a book, I was yeah. like, this is good. That That's cool. I, I want that. And I think at the time it was only on, on the Mac. Um, but then it came to PC and, but I remember it coming out and, and I really found it strange at first. And even now I only use the most basic features of it because there's so much you can do. Like I, I have published an ebook from Scrivener, but, um, I haven't like, there's more that I could do and, uh, and I could improve the formatting I'm sure, but, uh, right. yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's what I do now is I. Uh, because you can convert directly from Scrivener into EPUB, into the Mobi file that Amazon requires, uh, into everything except for pages, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, you can, into, well, into Word. Will read, pages reads Word, so it's okay. Right. But like, um, you, you can't, uh, but if you make a page document and don't save it as Word, it's like you can go the one way, but not the other. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. that, yeah, that's, yeah. Like, pages can open Word, but Word doesn't open pages. So it's like yeah. you're, you're, you're going into word a lot, it seems, um, between the two platforms and with Scrivener, like, you know, I'm not a, fa I'm not a fanboy, but I, I, but I do have, um, uh, uh, pastor David, uh, Lee Martin, he's made this teaching series for, uh, how to use Scrivener. It's called Scrivener Unleashed and, um, it, it costs $97, but it's like he, it's these teachings and these videos and screenshots and stuff of him walking you through how to use Scrivener. And he, he's the only, he's to date, the only time I've come across uh, teachings and stuff on this that are for windows as well as Mac. And so, so $97 might be steep for people, but I've got this deal worked out with them where if you go and you purchase it and you use the coupon fire on your head, if you write that in for the coupon, uh, you get 50% off. And it's like $48 or whatever the 50% of 97 turns into. Right. And so, <laughs> so if, if, if you're, you're serious about, um, writing and, and you know what Chris and I are talking about with, with, uh, Scrivener and, and that as a, as your word processor. And I recommend it. He rec he seems to recommend it, I guess. Um, if, if you, you think you want to give it a shot and you don't know how to make heads or tails of it and you're, you're willing to spend some time and some money learning how to use it because it outweighs or the, the benefits outweigh the initial cost. Um, then, then do that. You go to Scrivener unleashed.net. I believe it is. Uh, I was looking at it earlier, but there's a, a video that starts when you <laughs> learn, learn Scrivener dot net Scrivener script. How do you pronounce it? Scrivener? I say, but yeah, I have I think, no idea what it should yeah, be. <laughs> I have no idea either. So learn Scrivener. It's S C R I V E N E R dot net. Um, there's a, an automatic video by uh, David uh, that's playing and telling you about it. It's 15 minutes long. But if you decide you want to get it, use fire on your head as the coupon code and you can get it half off. Um, if you don't already have Scrivener, then, then you go use the, the, the free trial. If you want, you know, you can have it for 30 days. So, um, you know, uh, I recommend that. Uh, yeah, I'm my, sure. Yes, yeah. 
my fiance's writing uh, like she just downloaded the 30 day trial on the on windows because she's writing her master's thesis and so and i was like this is the tool you need to write your right. thesis because you can lay it out it's so it's so nice for that and i i really recommend scrivener for longer writings especially i know some people use them like yourself for shorter and part of me really wants to do that i'm just aware i'm like i really like the simplicity of the system where i can start writing on a mobile device and lay out my idea and then pick it up elsewhere i could start using a notebook again but right. uh, i've got stuck in my ways i i really do recommend scrivener and uh, even if you i think even if uh, listeners do not want uh this training definitely look because there are training systems out there and although it's complex like there there's so much value you can get when you really know how to use it yeah um it's easy you you can get round um the first challenges without knowing all the tricks uh like i i've managed i i'm but i'm pretty technological I'm pretty tech savvy. I, I, I can work out how to use a system uh, pretty easily. So, um, and I've managed to get the hang of the basics of it, but uh, right. there's a lot I don't know how to do. And I'm, I, I'm definitely going to check out this training. You told me about it at the start and I was thinking, oh, I need to learn how to, how to do some extra things in Scrivener. So yeah, I, I will definitely check it out. Um, I, I know fiction authors, that that like using it for for different templates that you can organize mm. uh, characters into. I don't know. I don't write fiction, but it, um, I suppose there there's ways that these extra research tabs and extra um, you know tools and temp like there's templates that are. Yeah, built I know. I know Scrivener. lawyers who who use it for like they'll plan a a brief and they'll you know import data into the research area that yeah. they can use that. So. Well, Chris, we're reaching like nearly two hours. I told you. Yeah. I told you two hours was short, not long. It really, it really was. I can't believe it. Right. So now you understand why the times you've interviewed me, it's been long, <laughs> longer than we planned on. Cause, yeah. Because it just feels like – it feels like – I heard Stephen King describe when he makes a book and he's turning it into a movie. It feels like um, you're, you've, you've gone on vacation and you're trying to – you know, put all the souvenirs and the, and the towels you stole from the hotel and all these extra things in your suitcase and you can't close it. And almost every time I record a podcast, I feel something like that. It's, it's, <laughs> there's always more we could talk about, but this is, I, I hope uh, the listener, listener to this, that this has been um, some helpful, obviously there's plenty more you could, um, you could, uh, we could talk about, uh, there's, there's entire podcast series about writing about blogging about uh kindle publishing and all these kind of things i feel like we scratched the surface but hopefully we're getting you off to a good start um uh, you know like i said praying medic and i are 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 on tap to talk again Uh, he's been on the podcast before but i don't know if um i'll be on his or he'll be on mine to talk more about like self-publishing uh especially and you know there's so many there's so many ways that like uh, i don't know if you feel this way chris but when it comes to write, like if you're a Christian and you feel like you have stuff to share and writing is your gift, you're not a worship leader, you don't play music or you don't do other forms of art. There's so many ways that like God can use your, your writing uh, to impact people, you know? Mm. And so that's how, that's how I do it. That like my whole goal is, well, how do I, how do I set people more on fire? How do I light people up to, to make disciples go impact their own worlds and stuff like that? And it's this podcast and, and, and writing and, and granted today wasn't like a specifically theological discussion, but it's for that goal, you know, cause I know that yeah. I think the thing people contact me about the most has to do with writing, has to do with books, has to do with blogging or whatever the case may be. So, um, hopefully people who don't fit into any of those categories, uh, today's discussion wasn't boring for you or, or, or you, you could get something out of it for yourself. Um, but otherwise this was, uh, I think this is going to, this is a powerful, uh, tool. Uh, some of you will, um, yeah, get some stuff out of, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I think it like one of the things, like a, a very personal benefit that I've had from writing different things over time has been that clarification 
that I've found that when I've written something down, even just for myself in a journal or put out an article on a web page, express my thoughts about a topic or uh, made a guide for something it really helps to clarify my thoughts and clarify my thinking as well and uh, it helps me to express myself a lot better than, uh, than I used to so um, I, w- I would really recommend even if uh, even if you don't think of yourself as a writer maybe just start keeping a journal occasionally and write out your thoughts about a topic because, and maybe then share that because you never know who it might help. It could be yourself or someone else. Right. Well, Chris, thanks for making this happen. Uh, I think we didn't get through your story, but you mentioned, (laughs) you mentioned you're in Poland. Um, and so for me, I had to get up early in the morning uh, for this to work. (laughs) And for you, it's in the afternoon after after work, or or how does? How no, does... before work, I've got to. Uh, I I most of my teaching is in the afternoon because that's when people are free. So gotcha. I've got to go off and uh, teach class, which is why we got to stop earlier than we might otherwise. Right, and I got to get out of my pajamas. So <laughs> this is. <laughs> I've enjoyed it, Chris. Thanks, and uh, are you willing to come on again if uh, the opportunity or the appropriate uh, occasion warrants it? Okay, good. Because I'd love to chat some more with you sometime. Thanks for coming on, bro. God bless. My pleasure. We hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to subscribe to the podcast, you can find us in iTunes or on Stitcher Radio or directly at fireonyourhead.com for more options. If you want to support Steve and Lily Brimner as missionaries in Peru or find out more about what they do, be sure to head over to their blog at stevebrimner.com or check out Steve's Kindle books on Amazon and leave reviews of the ones you liked. See you next time.